My name is Nina De Caesar. I've been playing bass for almost 22 years at this point. I started in a public school. After a few years, I started studying with uh, George Vance, who is an incredible pedagogue who really kind of revolutionized how we teach younger bass players and specifically smaller bass players. Um, he was really instrumental in bringing the uh, fractional basses you know, into the conversation for, for younger players. So I had a little teeny orange quarter size bass. Um, it was incredible working with him. He worked really closely with Suzuki to kind of, you know, create this progressive repertoire um, that's now um, kind of the cornerstone of how we teach children. And it's interesting now um, teaching using those books because I really, I remember so much of it, but there's also a lot that I don't remember and it's almost like he's teaching me through the books at this point. In high school, I studied with Ira Gold and Ali Ostenfar and Hal Robinson. And then I went off to Rice University and I studied with Paul Ellison, who's kind of, you know, the, the base daddy to a lot of us. <laughs> um, and then I was really lucky to win my first job uh, right after I started my master's. So I moved to the Oregon Symphony for five years and now I play in the Baltimore Symphony. And I was uh, recently appointed to the faculty at Peabody Conservatory. When I was in Portland, I was primarily teaching, I, I taught a free beginner class. So it was like groups of eight to 11 year olds um, every single week. And that kind of had its own challenges. And then all of my private students were mostly middle school and high school. Um, and I did a lot of teaching when I was in Portland. Um, and as anyone knows who teaches younger kids, it can be, you know, exhausting and challenging in certain ways and also, you know, super fun. <laughs> the middle schoolers, I think, are the most fun. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but now that I'm kind of looking at it as, um, like, teaching college students and, and master's students, it's an opportunity to figure out um, the kind of players that we really need um, in, in our field at this point. kind of combination of creating opportunities for more women and also um, empowering the women that are studying <laughs> um, with either me or anyone else to make sure that they're really going for um, the orchestral route.
so funny because it is an opportunity to share, you know, little clips of yourself playing, but it's also just a way to share, like, kind of what your life looks like, and, you know, I'll just, you know, if I go out for lunch, I'll be like, oh, this is cute, like, let me take a little picture, you know? We went wine tasting yesterday, and I saw a baby sheep, and I was like, oh, everyone needs to see the baby sheep! And I think it's, you know, it's definitely an interesting platform because not only can you share yourself as an artist or musician, but also you can create, um, a way for people to connect with you as a person. And I think, you know, that's where like influencer culture comes from. Not that I'm like an influencer in any way, but I think especially, you know, you're talking about empowering women and trying to get them to, um, you know, join orchestral bass sections. And it's like, I think what has been lacking so much before is like, since so often there are only men in the bass section, you go to college and you only see men and it's like, oh, I don't feel similar to any of them. And Instagram has kind of provided a way for me to show them all the many ways that we are similar. And even though they're maybe like earlier on in their career, like at deep down, we are very similar people. Cool because Instagram is global too so it's like providing like sometimes I'll do like a Q&A and someone will ask a question about like vibrato and then that's an opportunity to, to provide you know not that I think like I'm the best teacher everyone should have access to me but it is like a level of accessibility that hasn't necessarily been there before like maybe you live in the middle of nowhere in the US and like you don't have access to a teacher but you can get on Instagram and you know you can read through Q&A and all kinds of like you know answers about vibrato and watch videos from people all over the world and I think that's a really cool trait as well of Instagram. somewhere that the more you create content on social media like in ratio to how much you consume actually has to do with your mental health so if you're like contributing to the conversation then you know it'll be less unhealthy for you and I love all the student practice accounts I think that's like a really cool phenomenon that definitely what didn't exist when I was in school So students can hear each other from, you know, if one's in the UK, one's in the US, it's, it's really cool to have the context of what other people sound like, you know, at different schools and different stages. I don't know, I think that's something that is really awesome. Mm -hmm. 